Stop Stick is one of a series of law enforcement tools offered by Stop Stick to assist law enforcement agencies in stopping and preventing vehicle pursuits. Deployment of stop sticks in the deployment sleeve with the retractable cord reel attached is the sole recommended method for deployment of stop sticks. Any officer authorized to deploy stop sticks must be properly trained in this deployment method. Under no circumstances should a deploying officer enter the roadway to deploy or retrieve stop sticks. You or others can be killed or seriously injured if you don't follow safety procedures. Your safety and the safety of others are very important. Watch for these symbols during the video. They indicate important safety messages to alert you to potential hazards and instruct you on how to avoid or reduce the hazard. Stop Stick is a pursuit control device. Since it is used on the move, you must make every effort possible to advise pursuing units when and where Stop Stick is being deployed. Refer to your agency's pursuit policy for more information. Terminator, Patrol Terminator, and Piranha are pursuit prevention devices. They are used to stop pursuits before they begin. Barracuda is a multi-use barrier strip that provides perimeter security and is especially effective on large commercial vehicles. To better understand how stop stick works, let's take a closer look at its construction. Each stop stick is 3 feet long and weighs 1.1 pounds. It is comprised of 36 Teflon coated hardened steel quills, each 1 and 7 eighths inches long. Inserted into each end of all quills are 72 Teflon coated steel spike tips, each 3 eighths inch long, assembled in three rows of 12. Each tip and quill assembly is 2 and 5 eighths inches long from tip to tip. The spike and quill assembly is inserted in a polymer core and encased in a tartan tape glass filament frame. All of these inner sub-assemblies are inserted into a polypropylene housing, which protects the officer from injury while handling stop stick. Molded polymer end caps are placed on both ends. Accessories include a reusable nylon sleeve, a cord reel with 80 feet of 150 pound test polyester line, a mounting tray designed for trunk mounting, and a storage bag for SUVs. More storage accessories are offered from Stop Stick. Two warning labels appear on each Stop Stick. One warns of serious or fatal injuries resulting from a driver losing control of a vehicle and cautions officers not to use Stop Stick without proper training and never to use Stop Stick on motorcycles. The second label reminds officers that stop sticks contain sharp spikes, that they should never bend stop stick or push spikes through the housing, and never attempt to repair, dismantle, or open a stop stick. Always plan ahead for pursuits in your area. Determine the most suitable and safest location. Then, when a pursuit is necessary, you can proceed to one of these pre-planned locations or direct other officers to where they can best deploy stop stick. Officers should also be prepared to find substantial cover in the location, such as a large tree or other large object or sufficient structure capable of stopping an approaching vehicle. Patrol vehicles are not adequate cover. Before deploying stop stick, consider these important safety issues. Never deploy stop stick if you believe the location or circumstances of your pursuit make it unsafe to do so. And never use tire deflation devices on motorcycles or vehicles with fewer than four wheels. To reduce the risk of serious or fatal injuries resulting from a vehicle crash, use extreme caution when pursuits reach excessive speeds, or when fleeing suspects appear to be under the influence of drugs or alcohol, or similar impairments which may increase the risk of losing control of the vehicle. Only deploy stop stick when you have a safe location to observe the target vehicle. You could be struck if a suspect unexpectedly swerves, stops, or loses control of the vehicle. 
you must be able to safely observe the target vehicle and other traffic. Once you are in a safe location, always advise pursuing units when and where stop stick is being deployed. Then look for an escape route in case you need to move away from your present position to a safer location. Using proper radio communication, pursuing officers should maintain a safe distance behind the target vehicle to allow the deploying officer to remove stop sticks from the road. In addition to safety, there are tactical considerations. Remember that planning ahead for the use of stop sticks includes determining the best locations for deployment and knowing where protection for the deploying officer exists. For optimum performance, stop sticks should be deployed on a hard surface such as concrete or blacktop. Try to deploy stop sticks at the last possible moment so that a suspect has limited ability to avoid striking them by driving the vehicle to either side of the sleeved stop sticks. If deploying near an intersection, position stop sticks just before entering the intersection on the road the target vehicle is traveling. Deploy before reaching any driveways or parking lots near the intersection. When deploying, remember that stop sticks cannot be pushed over ground that they have already been pulled over. Remember, only deploy stop sticks when you have a safe location from which to observe the target vehicle. So, how does this device penetrate and deflate a tire and yet avoid a catastrophic failure? When the suspect's vehicle impacts stop stick, the spike and quill assembly is forced into the tire. As the tire rotates, the spike tip falls out of the quill, creating a valve for the air to escape at a controlled rate, about 20 to 30 seconds on a passenger vehicle. Place the preloaded sleeve with the attached cord reel in the mounting tray with the red handles and cord reel on the side of your throwing hand for ease in handling when time is critical. When you need to use stop sticks, pull down the white Velcro straps and grab the red handles with your throwing hand to remove the sleeved stop sticks from the mounting tray. Unlock the cord reel. Be sure your thumb overlaps your fingers on the grip handle so your thumb won't interfere with the unwinding motion of the crank handle. When all lanes of traffic are clear and there are no vehicles between the target vehicle and the point of deployment, use the red handles to throw the sleeved stop sticks to the opposite side of the road. It is effective to use a sidearm motion, keeping the sleeved stop sticks below your waist. To ensure maximum throwing distance, do not throw them overhand and do not throw them underhand. Communicate to the pursuing officers that the stop sticks are in position. Once the sleeved stop sticks are on the opposite side of the road, position yourself in a safe location for the impending deployment while using your peripheral vision to monitor approaching traffic. While waiting for the target vehicle to arrive, reel in any slack with the cord reel and keep the cord line flat on the road surface to allow non-target vehicles to safely drive over the cord. Lock the cord reel and hold it by the handle while awaiting the target vehicle. Never wrap the cord around your hand or any portion of your body. Do not hold the cord reel up in the air or the cord could get caught in the frame of a vehicle. Move to a safe location for the impending deployment. The cord reel contains 80 feet of cord, so be sure you are far enough away that your safety is ensured. As the target vehicle approaches, at the last possible moment, pull the sleeved stop sticks into the path of the vehicle. 
Never rush a deployment. Allow enough time to correctly deploy sleeved stop sticks. As you pull them into the road, turn to watch where you are going and retreat to a safe location. After the sleeved stop sticks have been struck, remove them from the roadway by pulling the cord reel with both hands. Rewind the cord by pulling out approximately five feet of cord and place the cord between two fingers with a small amount of tension when rewinding. Always use caution when removing stop sticks from the road and never enter the roadway if pursuing vehicles have not passed. Handle stop sticks carefully since they may break open after being struck by a vehicle exposing sharp spikes. Always follow the policies and procedures of your agency when deploying stop sticks. Those policies supersede any written or verbal instructions from stop stick. If stop sticks were struck by any vehicle, they are no longer fully functional and should be replaced as soon as possible. Each device has a label attached. If the outside label has been removed, a hidden label can be found inside the stop stick housing. Locate the side where the label was removed. Take a sharp object and cut along the far right side of the stop stick housing. This will reveal a label with an identification number and the phone number to call. Complete the pursuit reporting form online at stopstick.com. If you have any questions about replacements, call or email Stopstick. If Stopsticks were not struck by any vehicle, inspect the Stopsticks, cord, reel, and sleeve for damage. If undamaged, return the sleeved stop sticks to the mounting tray for the next deployment situation. With reasonable care, your stop sticks will be ready to aid you in preventing or terminating a pursuit that creates a hazard to you and the public. So follow these simple guidelines. Periodically inspect stop sticks to ensure they are undamaged and ready for deployment. This should be part of your pre-shift routine. When stop sticks are stored in the mounting tray, be sure other items in the trunk are not loaded too high, so neither they nor your stop sticks are damaged. Also, make sure that the cord reel is properly secured by the mounting tray's Velcro straps. A complete training kit is available from Stop Stick Limited. It contains training sticks and sleeves, cord reel, and student and teacher lesson plans. Note that training sticks have no quills to flatten tires. Installation of stop sticks in each agency patrol vehicle provides a viable alternative to extended vehicle pursuits that endanger you, the public, and the fleeing suspect. Risk management experts say that the greatest risk to our safety and those around us occurs while we are doing the most dangerous tasks we are required to do and when these tasks are also things we do the least often. But with the use of ongoing training, pre-planning, and frequent practice, you may be able to decrease the heightened dangers of high-risk, low-frequency activities. Practice using stop sticks so you are ready to deploy them properly when you need to end a pursuit.